Hello and welcome to 50 quick tips for using your Android Lollipop Nexus 6. In this video we cover handset, home screen, notification, camera and battery basics. So let's get started. To turn on your Nexus 6 simply press and hold down the power button which is on the right side trim of the phone and has a serrated edge. When you see a Google logo appear you can let go and wait for the device to boot up. To turn off the Nexus 6 when the device is awake and the screen is showing, press and hold the power button until the words power off appear on screen. Tap that to shut down your device. To check for notifications when your phone is locked and asleep, you can simply pick up the Nexus 6 and look at the phone and this will activate the ambient sensor which will display notifications on a dimly lit screen. You can then press on the phone to unlock and use it or leave it and the screen will dim and the phone will go back to sleep. You can, if you wish, turn this setting off. To quickly access your phone contacts from the lock screen, swipe from left to right on any part of the screen that isn't a notification. This will launch your phone dialing options. To quickly access the camera from the lock screen, swipe from right to left on any part of the screen that isn't a notification. To quickly access settings from the lock screen, swipe down from off the top of the screen to bring down a range of options such as Wi-Fi, cellular signal and data, flashlight, Bluetooth and more. To unlock the device, simply tap the power button to show your lock screen and then swipe from the bottom to the top of the screen. This will display your home screens. There are three control buttons at the bottom of the screen that are always available to you no matter what you are doing. The left button is the back button and it simply goes back one place from where you currently are. In this example I have gone into a news application and then selected an article to read. If I press the back button once I will exit the article and return to the news screen and if I press back again I will exit the application. The middle button is the home button and this will automatically exit out of wherever you are and whatever you are doing and return you to the main home screen. So if you do ever get lost, don't panic, simply use this home button. The right button is the overview button and this will display all the applications and screens you have used in chronological order with the most recent being first. So you can use this screen to quickly jump from one location to another. Simply swipe through the list and tap on one to go to that screen. When you charge your Nexus 6, make sure you use the plug that is supplied with a device as this ensures that you benefit from turbo charging, which can give you 6 hours of charge from just 15 minutes of charging time. Whenever you have finished using your device, tap the power button to instantly lock your device and put it to sleep. The screen will turn off and you will need to tap the power button again to wake your device. On your main home screen you can swipe right to left to move between different screens with different applications and widgets. Swiping left to right will go through the same screens. You can keep track of which home screen you are on through the small dots positioned in between your home screen and dock. Each time you swipe a different dot will turn white. From your main home screen, if you swipe from left to right, you will access Google Now, which displays news, weather, sports scores, traffic alerts, and a lot more. This feature is tied to the default Google Now launcher. The middle button in your dock is the application drawer, and this is where you can access all the applications on your device. Again, you can swipe from right to left to cycle through the applications, and there is a dot at the very bottom of the screen to show you where you are. To add an application from the drawer to your home screen, press and hold on the app you want and this will automatically switch back to your home screens. You can then drag the app around the screen and then let go to drop it into place. To move or delete that application, you can again long press on it to pick it up and then drag it around the screen or drag it to the X symbol at the top of the screen to delete it. This only deletes the icon, it doesn't uninstall the application. To create a folder of icons on your home screen, long press on an icon to pick it up and then drop it on top of another icon to create a folder. You can then pick up more icons to add to the folder. Tap on the folder to access the icons in it. To disband the folder, long press on the icons in the folder and then pull them out and drop them on your home screen. When one icon is left, the folder will automatically disappear. To rename a home screen folder, 
open the folder and then press on the words unnamed folder. The keyboard will pop up and you can type in your new folder name. Press enter on the keyboard or tap off the folder to complete the renaming process. To add a widget to your home screen, long press on a blank section of the home screen. Three options will appear and you want to choose the middle widget option. Widgets come in a variety of forms from many different applications. You can swipe through the widgets to choose the one you want. When you find a widget you're happy with and you want to add it to one of your home screens, long press on it to pick it up and then drop it onto one of your home screens. As part of a widget you may have to select some options. In this example I need to select a topic for my news widget. Once it's added to your home screen it might have interactive features like this one that lets you swipe through different news articles. So add the widget and have a play and see what it can do. Many widgets can be resized and to do this you need to long press on it to pick it up and then drop it in the same location. A border will appear around the widget which you can then drag to adjust the size of the widget. Tap off the widget to confirm its new size. To change your wallpaper long press on a blank portion of your home screen and choose the left of the three options which is a wallpaper. You will see various wallpaper options at the bottom of the screen and you can scroll through them until you find one that you like. Tap on it to preview the wallpaper and if you want to use it, tap on use wallpaper in the top left hand corner to select it. Now when you scroll through home screens you will see the wallpaper scroll along with it. But if you want something a little more exciting you can try adding a live wallpaper. You will find these by scrolling past the static wallpapers to the named live wallpapers. These will contain funky animations that always run in the background, so make sure you find one that isn't too distracting. Again, once you've found one that you like, press select wallpaper and that will default to your home screen wallpaper. If you swipe down from off the top of the screen, this will display your notifications. If you swipe down again when notifications are displayed, this will show various quick settings. You can gain instant access to this quick setting screen by swiping down with two fingers from the top of the screen. If you have downloaded another home launcher from the Google Play Store, you can switch between launchers by going to the settings and then pressing on the home option. This screen will display all the launchers currently on your handset. When you select a new one and press the home button, you will return to that launcher's home screens. To expand all notifications on the lock screen you can flick down on an individual notification such as an email alert and this will expand along with other notifications such as the battery meter you can see above. You can continue to scroll up and down the list and the notifications will expand when in view. When you view notifications on home screens you can expand individual alerts by pinching them outwards or inwards to contract them again. To open a notification, simply double tap on it to jump to the associated application. If you want to know the source of an application, long press on it to display the application name. When a notification source is displayed, you can press on the information icon to take you to the app notification settings for that particular notification. You can then choose to block the notifications from ever appearing again, which can be useful for over eager games and social media apps. You can also set notifications to priority from the same screen by long pressing on the notification, tapping on the information button and then toggling the priority tab on the app notification screen. To set priority mode on your handset, press the volume button and then tap on the middle priority option. You can set this for a length of time or indefinitely. This will put priority notifications to the top of a list and only allow incoming notifications from priority applications. If you want to manage all of your application notifications in one go, you can do this by going to settings and then selecting the sound and notification option. In this screen towards the bottom, there is another option called app notifications. This lists all your applications and you can flick back and forth through them to your heart's content to block and prioritize each application notification. 
If you want to hide the content of notifications, you will need to set up some form of security on your device. And to do this, you need to go to settings and then choose security. Choose your desired style of security, whether it be a pattern lock, pin number or password. After you have done this, the next screen you see asks you if your notifications should be displayed. If you choose hide sensitive notification content, then when you next display notifications, any content will be replaced with the line contents hidden. Once you have security in place, you can change notification security options by going to settings and then sound and notifications. The option you want this time is when device is locked, and this will give you three options. If you choose don't show notifications at all, then when your handset is locked, you will not see any reference to notifications at all. However, when you unlock your device, you can swipe down from the top of the screen to view your notifications. To dismiss a single notification, you can flick it left or right. And to dismiss all notifications at once, press the button in the bottom right hand corner of your notifications. When you're using the camera to access both camera features and settings, swipe from left to right on the screen. Camera features are on the left, the settings button is on the right. To take a still shot when you're filming, you can tap on the screen which will flash white to indicate a picture has been taken. If you swipe in from the right side of the screen, this will give you quick access to the pictures in your gallery, with the most recent pictures displayed first. You can swipe from right to left to cycle through your pictures, and swipe left to right to return to the camera mode. The Nexus 6 comes packaged with a HDR mode, that's high dynamic range. This takes a quick burst of images and combines them to provide a better quality picture. It's particularly useful in low light situations, although taking a shot isn't quite as instant as in normal mode. So unless you're tracking rapid movement, such as at sports events, it's generally advised to keep HDR mode on, even if my own pictures are a little inconclusive. If you swipe outwards from the middle of the screen with your thumbs, you can zoom in. And if you pinch towards the middle of the screen, this will zoom back out. That's a pretty standard feature. But the extra party trick is the ability to double tap on the screen with one thumb or finger and then swipe left or right to control the zoom as well. To focus on different parts of your shot, simply tap on the part of the screen you want to focus on and a white ring will appear on screen. You should see the camera refocus at that point on that particular subject. You can use manual exposure on the Nexus 6 camera, but it's hidden away a little bit in the settings screen. To access it, swipe in from the left side of the screen, choose settings and then press on the advanced options. That's where you will find manual exposure and you can toggle it on or off. You probably don't notice this, but most camera settings on phones automatically switch the handset screen to full brightness when the camera is in use. Strangely, the Nexus 6 doesn't do this, so to make sure what you see on screen most accurately reflects what shot you're about to capture, make sure you turn the brightness up to full manually. Google have added a new feature to the camera and it goes by the name of Lens Blur. The idea behind it is to ensure that the central object gets top billing while everything else in shot goes blurry. To use it, swipe in from the left side of the screen and select Lens Blur. Take a picture and then slowly tilt your device upwards. After a few seconds of processing, you should have a picture with one centre of attention. The Nexus 6 is capable of turbocharging, but you can only achieve that by using the turbocharging plug supplied with the Nexus 6. When you use this plug, you can expect a 30% charge in about 30 minutes, which equates to approximately 12 hours of battery life. If you have a QI compliant wireless charging device, then you can use it with your Nexus 6, which is compatible. Simply place the Nexus 6 backside centrally on the charging pad, and that should automatically start charging the device. Do note, however, that this is a significantly slower way of charging your Nexus 6. A battery icon will always appear in the top right corner of your screen. If you want to know exactly how much battery is left, you can swipe down on the lock screen to show a percentage. 
You can also do the same thing on your home screens, but you will need to swipe down once to show notifications and then again to show your battery percentage. Instead of having to swipe down twice on a home screen to show the battery percentage, you can swipe down with two fingers to instantly show that and your quick settings. Furthermore, the battery indicator is a button that if you press, you'll be taken to the battery settings screen. A classic way to conserve battery life is to reduce the on-screen idle time. To do this, go to settings, choose display and then select the sleep option. This determines the time it takes for the screen to automatically switch off after you last interacted with the phone. You can turn Wi-Fi off when the Nexus 6 is asleep to save battery power. And you do this by going to settings, selecting Wi-Fi and then pressing the three dots in the top right hand corner and choosing advanced. In this screen you want the keep Wi-Fi on during sleep option and then you can choose to have it always on only when plugged in or never. Do bear in mind that if you turn Wi-Fi off during sleep you may not receive notifications such as emails and social media updates. If you go to the battery screen under the battery usage graph a list of the most battery hungry apps and processors will be displayed. You can press on each of these things and some of them will suggest ways in which you can conserve battery and provide direct links on the places to go to do that. It's mostly system apps and processes that offer this functionality but investigate and see what battery saving opportunities are out there. Android Lollipop devices have a built-in battery saver mode. To access this you can either press on the battery icon in your notifications or use the settings screen. Then press the three dots in the top right corner and choose battery saver. When the battery saver mode is active, this will clearly be visible on screen as two red strips will appear at the top and bottom of the screen. The warning is there to obviously tell you your battery is low, but also that the battery saver mode has implications on the performance of your phone such as background data, device vibration and account syncing. A useful addition to the battery saver mode is to set when it automatically kicks in and you can tell the phone to do this at either 15 or 5% of a battery life. The Nexus 6 uses an ambient display which means that whenever you pick it up the screen comes on. If you don't like the idea of that feature drinking your battery juice, go to settings, display and then toggle off ambient display. As well as trying to protect your battery you also want to maximise charging time. So on screen now is a list of charging methods and how much they increase the battery in a 30 minute test. As I said in my first battery tip, the turbo charge is by far and away the quickest way to charge the Nexus 6. Next comes wall chargers with portable chargers a little behind and wireless charging way behind. Also try to minimise the use of your phone when it's charging but turning it off, at least in my experience, doesn't make much of a difference. For a more detailed look at how to charge your phone, click on the link on screen now. Thank you for watching this Video Gadgets Journal video today. My name is Rob and each of my videos is designed to inform, intrigue and entertain, to connect you with your technology. Today I've been connecting you with the Nexus 6. If you want to follow more of my journal on the device, then click over here. If you want some useful hints and tips on the Nexus 6, click over here. And if you want more information about the channel in general, then click on me. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.